We welcome to the show Horace Panther. So, how's it going? Um, wow. Well, um, uh, I'm on seven day working now. I'm just really busy. Um, no, fine, fine, very good. Um, the specials are girding their loins later in the year. Um, we we play the um, Isle of Wight Festival in June, and then. Um, have a, several months off to recover, and then we go back on the road in um, in November. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, I'm painting. Um, oh. I'm painting pictures. Oh, great! So, um, have you always been an artist? I met Jerry Dammers at um, Lanchester Polytechnic on a. Do we, we both did a fine art degree. Art has always been the has been lurking around somewhere or other, you know. I, I tell the story that when we first, when the specials first went to, to New York, everybody else went out to the nightclubs and I, I went to bed early so I could go to the, the Guggenheim and the Museum of Modern Art in the morning. <laughs> Not necessarily true, but it's a story I tell, you know. Yeah, yeah, you like to tell that story, yeah. <laughs> so, what kind of art do you like to draw? Can it be anything? Or? Um, no, I'm, I'm very influenced these days by, by pop art. Andy Warhol, Roy Lichtenstein, or the English pop artists like, like um, Sir Peter Blake, and that sort of stuff. So um, I like the idea of, of sort of um, ordinary things that are, that you know that you wouldn't necessarily paint pictures of. I'm currently painting pictures of of, um, of cassettes. You remember audio cassettes? Yeah. From oh, the, um, oh right, yeah, I saw one on your website actually. Is um, madness? Is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 doing um, I'm doing some 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 of those at the moment, but and people seem to like them, so that's good. So, what do you think is your most popular painting? Popular? Oh, crikey! Um, I did a cassette of um, of um, uh, Woodbine Studios in in um, Leamington, where we recorded Ghost Town, um, and a lot of people in Leamington bought it, especially <laughs> around Christmas time. That's been that's been really popular. That, that's been pretty good. I've done a special sprint as well, um, which, which has sold quite well, <laughs> surprisingly enough. Yeah, but there are a lot of paintings that I really enjoy doing, but that that, that um, they don't actually sell a great deal. But it's, mm. so it's, it's, it's it's you know it's like it's the same as, as the music really. It's like you do you do something that's commercial or do you do something because it's great. So I'm kind of sort of like trying to sort of figure out you know to to do both. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah, I get you. How did you first join the specials in the first place? Okay, um, um, Jer- I went, like I said, I met Jerry at um, Jerry Dammers at, um, at art college. He he knew that I played bass, and I knew that he played key- that he played keyboards. And um, and it wasn't until um, I um, he graduated and I graduated that he he said, you know, I've I've got these songs. Can you help me play them? Um, join this group. Which I suppose was um, 1976, 77, and um, it was like, and there were these uh, these sort of funky songs and these kind of reggae songs. The funk stuff was okay; I could cope with that, but the reggae was a bit peculiar. I didn't really know how to play that. But luckily, I met um, um, I met Limbal Golding. He was in the group as well, and um, his mate Desmond Brown, who was the key, later to be the keyboard player in the selector, he used to come round my little flat. And, and sort of and say right now listen the bass go dun, da, 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 you know and it's like I don't understand what you mean but then I but I eventually got it you know um, and then it was a it was um, there were four of us there was myself Jerry Linval and this guy called Silverton who was the, the drummer then we got a, a, a singer in and he didn't last too long then we got so we got Terry in but around about the same time as we got Terry and we got Roddy in um, and then. Um, so it just sort of sort of snowballed from that. It didn't really snowball. It was it was quite a quite an effort. But it um, by sort of after sort of a year or so, we got on a tour with the Clash. So we we spent three and a half weeks in 1978 playing with them. And then um, what were they like? The Clash, fabulous. I mean, that was like I always say that the that the um, it was the that that tour was sort of the making of us, you know. We, we it was like joining the army, you know. We sort of um, at the beginning of the tour we were civilians, and at the end of the tour we were these kind of like road warriors, you know, who you know knew everything about rock and roll, you know. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. It was like it was like boot camp. It was it was a real shock to the system, but it was fantastic. But after then we after that we started working with Bernie Rhodes, um, which. I think we learnt a lot, but it wasn't successful in it that much in terms of our career. But um, the, the, the winter of 1978-79, um, we decided to make our own record. So um, early 
early um, 1979, we recorded Gangsters, and then um, got money together to, you know, to, to press up, I think it was 500 copies. But in the meantime, we got to know um, a guy called Rick Rogers, who um, worked at Stiff Records um, uh, in the press department, and he knew a few people, so he... Um, he got us some press in the you know and some gigs in the um, in, in London, and um, and then it sort of snowballed from there really. So that was kind of uh, that, that's it in a nutshell really. Well, well that's good. And how does it feel now um, reforming as you have done? Extraordinary. Um, I I I am 25 again when I put on a guitar and walk out on a stage. I don't know what happens at all. Chris, it is something uh, terrific. Because we, we're, these days, we're we're like an we're like an old married couple. We sort of just bicker, but <laughs> and we have we have nothing in common. Um, I don't even like football, you know. And, and um, but but when we appear on stage, you know, with our instruments, something extraordinary happens, and we we we, we become one of the best rock and roll bands in the world. I, I don't know how that works, but it works. Um, yeah, but um, <laughs> you know, but uh, thankfully it does, you know, and, and uh, long may it continue to do so. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that, that's why that's what it's like. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't really explain it. It, it. it is great. It is the you know, it is, it is the, the best feeling I know. You know. So <clears throat> originally, when you split, I, I did read your book, Scarred for Life, and yeah. you were saying that there were very many different influences on all of you, and was that was that the main reason? We split because we, I think we, we did too much too young, really. Uh, it all happened far too quickly. And um, we, um, we couldn't cope with it. Uh, or rather, we coped with or rather, we, we didn't cope with it in different ways. If we'd have all been drunks, we would, that would have been fine. Or if we'd have all smoked dope, it would have been fine. Or if we'd all taken cocaine and whatever, it would have been fine. Um, but it wasn't. We were, all, we were all different, you know. And I think it just, that sort of fame celebrity thing, it just exaggerates what you are anyway. Mm. You know what I mean? So if, if you were a bully before you became a pop star, you'd be even more of a bully when you are. You know, if, if you drank a lot before you became a pop star, you'd be even more of a drunk when you were a pop star. Do you know what I mean? Or yeah. if you were kind of retiring and shy... You know, before you were a pop star, you were even more reclusive when yeah. you were, you know. So it was it was kind of difficult. So I think we just sort of started going in different directions and just kept right on going. And there, in the end, there was just nothing to keep the group together. It was, it was very sad that there was no one particular point, you know. We never had fights. We never had fisticuffs or anything. It just broke down. Deceived. Yeah, and, and it, yeah, it just it just broke down. Just sort of grad, gradual is it entropy, which is the sort of the, the natural order of things. Anyway, it was a shame. I mean, it was it was dreadful. I, I was absolutely bereft. You know, here was this fantastic, amazing thing that you know brought all so much joy to so many people. You know, me included, and it just fell to pieces, and there was nothing I could do about it. It was awful. Luckily, you're back though now. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Are you uh, thinking of recording any new material soon? We're thinking or? about it, yes, because it's it's like, well, what are we going to do? I mean, can we, we, you know, it's all very well. We just go out and play, you know, Concrete Jungle and Message to You, Rudy, and Nightclub and Gangsters and whatever, but I'm, you know, it would be a good idea to record some. We we, we talk about it from time to time, but we we, we don't actually get it together. It, I don't it, know. It must I think be very it, hard, though, because it must we be did. a bit of a, well, not a worry, but you must think, well... The music we did was so great. Um, we're, we're a hard act to follow, if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah so it, it, it must be hard to, to to get a song together that's worthy of your previous. Well, that, that that's it, yeah, yeah. And, they, and there is a, 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 a lot to be said for give the public what they want and, you know, people yeah. see us to, to, um, to you know, to, to play the old song. I went to see Real Big Fish, you know them? Um, oh, yeah, I know, yeah. Um, a, a, a month or so ago. And from the stage, Aaron goes, um, these are four words that the audience um, dread to hear. Here's <laughs> a new song, you know. Yeah. And, and, and you, know, so the, you know, even a band like that, like, you know, even them, they can sort of take the mickey out, uh, out of all that. I'm very aware that, you know. 
So I, I, I don't know. It's quite a hot potato, the idea of, of, um, of releasing some, some, um, some, some new songs. But I think it, it might do us good. It might, you know, it might put us, um, put us back on. Uh, it might wake us up, I think, which, which might, might be a good idea. <laughs> well, yeah. we love to hear the old songs. I mean, yeah, yeah. they're fantastic. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> Thank you. So I, re- I was saying I was re- I read your book Scarred for Life. How long did that take you to put it all together? Jeez, um, I think probably about th- three. I wrote it when when I was a school teacher, and um, um, so I think I started it in two thousand and three. And, and it was, it was. I, I spent a couple of summer holidays doing it. Ah, that's right. I, I was off. I was off work. I twisted my ankle, and it was. I couldn't move. I couldn't, you know, walk around. So I, I you know, and I'd had this idea that um, there, there'd been various attempts at, by fans to to the document, you know, the, the, the rise of their favourite group, and and they were they were okay, but uh, sort of factually inaccurate. Mm-hmm. And there were a few things that I thought, you know, if I wrote a book, I'd put this in and this in and, and that in. And I got all these diaries that I had when we first went to America, when we first went to Japan. Um, and, um, and I had these scrapbooks that my parents, bless them, had, had collected. And there were, there were 11 scrapbooks full of sort of two-tone related interviews and articles. So I had all this re- this sort of resource material. And I was always the bloke when, who sort of, well, if you want to know what happened in the specials, ask Horace. Because I was the one who stayed sober, you know, and, and, <laughs> and I'm, you know, bass players, of course. And, um, you know, and I could remember all that stuff. So putting it together was just a question of reading all these articles and the diaries and things. which got a jog to my memory for, you know, um, for other things that I'd, I'd forgotten about. And I, I was uh, a big buddies with Neil Davis at, at the time. Um, and um, and I, I would always sort of phone him, him up and say, well, what, what do you remember about, you know, you know, the concert for One Pair of Families at Hammersmith Palais in, in 97? And, and he'd give his side of events, and, and which would sort of throw a, 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 a light on, on, on what we did. So there was... It, it was great fun doing it. I really enjoyed it. Until... I had to get to the stage where I had to, you know, detail the the last nine months of the band's career, which was not very nice because the last month, last nine months of the band's career was not very nice. So, yeah. but hey, hey ho, you know. But it was great. But I honestly thought um, I would retire a school teacher, Chris. I thought that would be it. You know, I know I'll I'll just write my memoirs, you know, <laughs> l- like you do, and like no one. Yeah band had written anything about the band at, at that time um and um it i think i signed the deal with or with macmillan publishing in 2005 and the book came out in 2007 and then hey ho you know a year later linval phones me up and says you know fancy going back on tour again you know so which was extraordinary was you very surprised when you got that call knock me over with a feather absolutely yes i know um, there had been a a few attempts for the 25th anniversary, but I was kind of like, hey, look, I'm a school teacher. I'm just about getting, you know, I finally got, you know, got the real job that my parents always wanted me to get. You know, <laughs> so I got a family, and you know, I'm, I'm raising children, and I'm, you know, once a month I get paid, you know, and I'm, you know, and I'm getting my feet under the table here. Um, so it was kind of like I, I wasn't that, I didn't take it that that seriously, to be honest. But then. Um, Five years later, I did. Yeah, yeah but luckily you did. Yeah, yeah, amen. Yeah. What's your favourite song that you've recorded with the specials? With the specials? Oh, crikey. That I've I really recorded? So yeah. I really like you know, um, what I like about you is your girlfriend. Okay. Which, um, I wasn't in the band when the, that, that third album got released. But it was such a great groove to play. I really, I thought that was, a lot of the, the I recorded three tunes from the, in the studio, and all of them, I think, are really. I'm really proud of the work that I did. You know, it was just such a shame that you know that um, you know. And then after I played them, I quit. Um, I think that the first album stuff probably it's up to you, and probably the sec for the second album probably International Jet Set again because it was difficult. It stretched me. I think live, um, Man at CNA is just an amazing song to play. 
you know, especially now, you know. Oh, yeah. It's very atmospheric, isn't it? Yeah, and, and, and you know, what with, like, Korea, you know, and especially all this business now in, in Ukraine, it's like, oh, my goodness, you know, the Cold yeah. War erupts, you know. So, yeah, it's... um. I don't know, does that answer your question? It's, it's, it's yes, a, it does, yeah. I recently put together, a, a, like, a traditional ska band with the guys from the specials who aren't in the specials, you know, like the keyboard player, Nikolai, and the horn section, you know, uh, Big John, Tim, oh, okay. and, uh, and Drew. And um, it's called the Uptown Ska Collective. And um, to, to play scat lights and Rico tunes. So it's really cool, you know, getting, revisiting all the, a lot of the, the scatter lights catalogue and um, choosing which, which songs to, to, to play live. Yeah, it is great going back, isn't it? Um, Lee Thompson from Madness has done a similar thing with his yes, Scar yeah. Orchestra. Yeah. Fantastic songs. Could you give me um, a, a great reggae song that you like or a, a great... Oh, uh, 5446 was my number two to the Maytons, definitely. That was quick. <laughs> That's, That's all right. I'll get that on. Dog's moment, yeah, because we used to use that before we went on stage. But it's just such a fantastic song. It's, and it's just, the, the groove is just, you know, I, I defy anyone to stand still while, while, like, when that song's playing. You can't. No, you, it's impossible. Well, thanks a lot for joining us on the show tonight. Chris, oh, it was, it was uh, a pleasure talking to you.